What's up YouTube, Craig Lopez back once again with another tutorialism and today we're going to be doing a beginner's guide to sampling within Falcon 2. Okay, so nothing complicated here whatsoever. Just going to be looking at how we can incorporate our sample packs into Falcon 2 so they're all loaded up and ready to go for when we need them. So I'm going to begin by making a drum kit and assigning different outputs to the different drum hits and setting up a choke group on the hi-hats. Then I'm going to be making a bass patch out of one shots and using key switches to switch between the different patches. And finally, we look at what we can do with loops. So we'll load a whole bunch of different loops into the same patch, tempo sync them all, and look at how we can scroll between them very quickly and very efficiently. Right, so let's get into this. So to begin with, it's probably a good idea to add your sample folder to your favorite places within Falcon. So to do that, just go up to Devices, locate where your samples are held. Mine are here. Just right click, go to Add to Favorite Places, and then they will always appear under Places right here. So let's start off with a drum kit. So let's go Raw Vintage Drum Machines. Let's go with this Lindrum here. So get a kick, press it and it will audition in here as long as you have this speaker enabled. Let's just get kick drum one and I'm just going to place that on C1. And let's go over snare. Okay, I'm not going to overthink this. Like a side stick. So maybe another snare. Or two. Okay, so that'll do for now. I think I'm going to hide my program level and my layers level just by clicking on these icons at the top here. So now if we click on a sample, we can see the waveform in the sample oscillator. So with drums, it's probably a good idea you set them all to one shot. So I'm just going to highlight them all, right click. So next I want all these samples to play back as one shot so that the sample is going to play all the way through every time I hit a key and not cut off halfway through like this. So I'm just going to highlight them all and you can see now the oscillator has changed to this batch processing icon. Just right click, go set playback type and go to set as one shot. So next I want to set all the hi-hats to the same choke group so that only one can play at a time. So to do that, I'm going to go to list. And in the key group section, it's going to scroll along to where it says exclusive group. If you don't see that, you just need to right click and make sure it's ticked there. So let me find the hi-hats, which are these three here. And just highlight them all by pressing shift. And I'm going to set them all to chalk group one. So now if I press an open hi-hat followed by a closed hi-hat, you will hear that the closed hi-hat will choke the open hi-hat. So for mixing purposes, we're probably going to want all of these drums on a separate output. So I'm going to right click and select the output option. And now we can set each of these drums to its own separate output. Probably best to start off with two because the main output is where all your effects are going to go to. And of course, you're going to need to set up multiple outputs within your DAW. So this is going to be DAW specific, but Cubase, just click up here and go to activate outputs. I'm going to activate all and then get rid of 17 because I'm not using it. So if I bring up the mixer now, everything has its own separate output. So before we save this, I'm just going to go to my info tab here. 
And I actually downloaded a picture of a Lindrum off the internet just before. I'm just going to grab that and just drag it onto here. Now we have a cool little Lindrum icon. And then click on the spanner, go to save program and samples as locate my UVI folder, go to my presets, call this Lindrum, of course. And now it should just appear as a preset ready to load up whenever I want. So let's load up a different preset for now. And you can see Lindrum is just down here. And it saved all the samples and the, the JPEG into a little folder here as well. So let's have a look at what we can do with one shots. So we can see I've got all these 808 samples here. So I'm just going to get the first one, drag it, drag it on the keyboard. We can see that all of these samples are in C. So the first thing I want to do is change the root note to C. And because these are 808 samples, they're not going to be too much use, much lower than this C. So I'm going to change the sample range to that C and maybe have this play over two octaves. I'm going to name this layer what the sample is called, which is Atlanta. Click on this plus sign to create a new layer. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the next sample. Right, so now when I press the keys, it's probably going to be really loud, but I've got a limiter on the master. We're going to get all five 808 to play at the same time, which is not going to be cool. Actually not too bad, but like I say, I've got a limiter on the output. So what I want to be able to do is switch between these different layers. So that only one layer is playing at a time. And I want a really quick and easy and efficient way of doing that. So what I'm going to do is in the list view here, click on the wrench and go to edit layer rules. So at the top here, it says no rule, right click to add a new rule. So, so I'm going to do add a root rule. And so we've got five layers here. So right click on this root, on this root rule and add five sub layers. And in the top root rule, I'm going to go to key switch. And on the first key switch, I'm going to click on learn, and then I'm going to press C1 on my MIDI keyboard. And I'm just going to keep it all the white notes for now. So D1, E1, F1, G1. Now under C1, I'm going to make sure that the top layer is ticked, the second layer, the third layer, the fourth layer, the fifth layer. So now when I press C1 on my keyboard, only the Atlanta layer is playing. If I press D, E, F, G, pretty cool. Now I want some kind of visualization here as to which notes are key switches. Now I did get in touch with the guys at UVI and they give me a script which you're supposed to add to be able to highlight which notes are key switches. Now it does work but I don't really want to get into scripting in this beginner's guide to sampling, mainly because there's no way I'm going to be able to explain it because I'm not a scripter. But I do have a little workaround, which they told me is an actual bug. So let's hope they don't remove it because it's really handy. So I'm just going to go into the program level 
And you can see here in the events, we have layer rules. Now, if I click on the plus sign, go to script processor and just add any of the script processors, really. I'm just going to go to default. And then we can just get rid of it because we don't need it. And boom, we can see that all the keys with key switches on are now highlighted in blue. So let's add some effects at the program level so they will affect all of those layers. Let's add maybe some drive. Enable oversampling. Let's have a listen to that. Change to a different layer. Cool. And let's assign that to a macro. Let's label that drive. And let's add the magnetic base shaper. And let's add these to their own macro as well. Uh, finally, let's add a compressor. Let's go with the multiband compressor. And let's go with one of the presets, bass and high. And let's add this to a macro as well. So if we go to our info page now, we have these macro controls already set up. I was playing about in Photoshop just before and I made this little thing here. And if we click on the little icon here, we can move these things about, make it look all nice and neat. Cool. We can, of course, assign all these to a MIDI controller. So right click, MIDI Learn. Or if, like me, you have the Nectar Panorama P1 controller, we can just go to Assign to Host Automation and it will be automatically mapped to our controller. Also, a few little things I want to point out before we get onto working with loops. We go back into the edit section and we go down to our oscillators and we click on these little cog buttons here. We can change the quality of the sample playback to lo fi or best. And we have sample start position. We've also got control over our pitch, fine tune, gain, tracking, all that kind of stuff. If we open up the layer icon for each layer, we can also choose the playback mode, whether we want poly, polyportamento, mono retrigger, mono portamento, mono portamento slide, and we have control over the glide time here. Right, so let's have a look at what we can do with sampled loops. So let me find some. <laughs> And I'm going to change the sampler to Ercam Stretch, which just has a really good time stretching algorithm. And we can see in the sample title that this sample is at 80 BPM. So I'm just going to type that in there. And we can see that it's in the key of D flat. So let's change that to D flat. And now I can play the sample across the keyboard. And now each key that I play will represent the root note of the sample. And 
Let's slow the tempo down to maybe 40 BPM so we can hear the quality of that time stretching. It's really impressive, isn't it? But let's go back to our original tempo. I'm going to name this layer and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to find similar guitar samples. And just do the exact same thing. Right, so we can see now I've got four different layers. Each of them has got a different guitar sample on. So I'm going to do the same thing that we just did with the 808 patches. Click on the wrench, go to Edit Rule Layers, Add Root, Add Four Subroots. Change the top one to Key Switch. Learn them. And assign each of the key switches to a different sample. Go up to our events, add a script processor. So now I have key switchable samples that if I keep playing the same trigger note, they should, in theory, all have the same root note and they're all tempo synced. So you can just imagine how convenient that's going to be when you're in the middle of making a beat. Right, so I think I'm just going to leave it there for now. Now, I did do a beginner's guide to synthesis within Falcon 2. So if you want to go check that out, click on the card above or the link below. Now, if you've made it this far through the video, thanks for watching. As always, if you haven't liked, comment or subscribe yet, please do that now. Help the channel out so much. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. Peace.